Hi again, everybody. David Colbert once again, and we're into our second panel. And this one's got a bit of a Yarra Valley theme, and I've done that on purpose. Um, but I have invited David Zakarakis just because we need someone from Marcelin and John Pierce from Mentone. I'll do the full intros. Uh, Sam Harper is uh, a former cricketer from Yarra Valley, still a cricketer, of course, now, but uh, AGSV star, Yarra Valley star now playing for the Melbourne Renegades and Victoria. David Zaharakis just retired from the Essendon Football Club from Marsland College, uh, played first basketball and football for Marsland. John Pierce from Mentone Grammar, um, superstar tennis player for them, but now, of course, professional winner of 25 doubles titles and Olympic bronze medalist with Ash Barty in the mixed doubles in Tokyo. And representing two of my favourites, um, uh, as we know, AGS Sport, wouldn't happen without the teachers who dedicate um, not just their school time, but a lot of time outside of that as well to um, us enjoying our school sport. So Mrs. Carol, Mary Carol is the girls sport coordinator, was a girls sport coordinator at Yarra Valley Grammar and Rob Lethbridge, who was a Commonwealth Games decathlon bronze medalist, went to Camberwell Grammar where he played athletics, football and cricket, but was the boys sport coordinator at Yarra Valley. So let's get into it. I'll start with you, Sam. Um, I have to say, when all my time at Yarra Valley, we weren't that great at cricket. And then you arrived and all of a sudden, Wooshka, we were superstars. Oh, being a bit kind there, Dave. I, I did roll into a nice year seven team. Um, yeah, which ended up probably being one of my most memorable um, cricketing moments at Yarra. We were lucky enough to win the premiership in my first year in year seven. We had a couple of good year 12s sort of rolling out the attack at Yarra Valley. So, yeah, it was a good introduction to cricket at Yarra Valley. You must have been a fair player to just walk straight into the first in year seven. Oh, yeah, I was three foot six and couldn't hit <laughs> off the square. So, I think I just blocked the new ball and it was time to get out for the other boys to come in and make a few runs. What, what are your memories of all of that? Were you always, was it cricket the thing that you wanted to do? Was that, um, you know, growing up, you know, watching as a, as a primary school um, student, was playing professional cricket your dream? It was always my, always my dream. I think uh, Mary and Rob will remember the sports complex we had there and I was always in there with my brother just hitting cricket balls or really doing any sport we could sort of find our holidays. We spent at school, funnily enough, with Dad involved there and then, yeah, that just transcended into um, yeah, since I was 12, 13, cricket being the sport that I wanted to play. When you, you know, you win that first premiership, I was um, lucky enough to be part of our, uh, our I say our, sorry, um, John and David, when I say our, I'm talking about Yarra Valley, um, <laughs> our first athletics um, premiership. And when, when you've had such a long drought, um, Sam, winning the first one is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it was great, David. It was especially good because you know how long the grass was at Yarra Valley. So, <laughs> It was mainly mud when I was there, so it was good to know that the grass actually finally started growing. Yeah, 100 off the 50 overs is usually a pretty good score. And there, the good old captain's speech at lunches, I think the Peninsula captain gave us a bit of a little dig in his speech saying it's bad like you guys couldn't show up on the big day, only make placing 100. And anyway, I think we had him six for 12, so it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty easy afternoon in the end. So, yeah, and, that was, and it was good later on in a, in a few years' time to be able to lucky enough to win another one. John, you, you know what it's like to um, play first sport in, in year seven. You did it from year seven all the way through to year 12. Um, Mentone won five out of a possible six titles um, in school tennis. What are your memories of um, your time at Mentone? Oh, it was great for me. I mean, I was lucky enough to actually share it with uh, my cousin my first year in year seven when he was in year 12. So to be able to play in a team with him was something special to begin with. But uh I got lucky to roll into a team which was pretty solid to begin with and then we just kept churning out boys that were really good at tennis, which was a lot of fun. I mean, probably, yeah, the biggest thing for me was just bus rides on Wednesday afternoon for school practice and just sort of the little things like that where you all get together. Didn't matter what you've been up to at school, but you all get up, get out, have a lot of fun and just come together as a team really and we kept, became pretty close, all of us. We're still in touch with quite a few of the boys, which is good. As I um, explained in the first panel, I played school tennis at Yarra Valley. Uh, the team element of the school tennis was awesome. And the structure of it, I used to love. The fact that you played, you know, a, a range of different formats and and all of that. I know you love your team tennis, but did that help you to get to where you are now and being that team-oriented sort of guy? 
Yeah, I love team aspects. I mean, any chance I get to play for a team, I mean, for me now it's, well, luckily enough I've got someone to lean on all the time now in playing doubles. But, I mean, any chance we get to do it for more of a Davis Cup and HB Cup now representing Australia is just, you just come together. You play for more than yourself. And I know we don't get to do it often. So, for me personally, the team aspect of it all is massive. And, I mean, I mean, the other boys see it week in, week out, but just the way you can come together, you rise together and you sort of feed off each other's adrenaline and emotions. And as you said, you come out the structure to it. It's very different, but also a lot of fun. It just brings individuals to come together as a team. I have to ask you while we've got you uh, to Tokyo, what a um, bizarre, amazing, incredible experience, um, crazy ending to the tournament in the mixed doubles where all of a sudden you've got the bronze medal alongside Ash Barty. Um, it was a, it was tremendous. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. I mean, uh, Ash and I penciled that one in a while ago and to be able to play together, I mean, going into the event, we were unsure whether she was going to play all three, especially after her big, big summer leading into Tokyo so to be able to get a chance to play with Ash and then walk away with a bronze is something huge and I know we loved every minute of it together and yeah to think 12 months ago we didn't even know if Tokyo was going to happen to now now we're looking forward to Paris so it was yeah something which you sort of itch and have a chill down the back of my neck thinking about Tokyo still. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, David, uh, we've talked about two premierships. Can I talk to you about the um 2008 final against pegs uh yeah is it still uh, does it still does it give you a twitch it does and i'll get to that but i first want to say i'm still bitter that you stole our uh, principal mark mary okay. so <laughs> let's just let's just get that on the table first <laughs> great guy great yeah, guy terrific guy so yeah well done on getting him from us um but yeah pegs uh yeah i was Fortunate or unfortunate uh, enough to lose, uh, yeah, grand final pegs in 2008. And then in 2006, I missed out on playing in the grand final because a few of us were up playing um, for Vic Metro uh, in Queensland. So we're fortunate enough to lose two grand finals to pegs, 2006 and eight, which was fun. Um, but yeah, 2008, it was, it was amazing because our team was pretty strong. Luke Shirley, who's captain of the West Coast, um, was there and um, you had uh, Jackson Trengrove who played in the AFL for playing for Pegs. You had Adam Marrick playing for Pegs. Um, yeah, all these guys, uh, Josh Toy who played in the AFL. So um, just to play against some mates uh, that you end up playing against in the AFL was, was pretty cool. And um, yeah, losing the grand final wasn't fun because uh, we thought we were finally a chance to beat Pegs. Uh, but yeah, it was a, it was an amazing experience because you played with some, with some guys who yeah, ended up making AFL and then played against them also. We'll talk about this when we get to, to Mary Carroll and you create a dynasty in something. And for Marcelin, when when I was going through schools in, in, in the 80s, it was Marcelin and Assumption that were the footy superstars. Of course, Soss would be just running around with a ball and a string at Marcelin, um, Steve Silvani. But the, the football culture at Marcelin was really strong, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And I remember growing up at primary school in the late 90s that uh, the talk was, oh, what school are you going to go to and uh, where are you going to go? And, and it was all us, my mates. At, at uh, I was fortunate enough, we had about 20, I think, kids from my primary school go to Marcel. And, and it was always, we want to go to Marcel because of football. The Oval was out the front, um, the John Bray Oval there. Everyone knew driving past what kind of Marcel represented back then. And it was sport and it was football and uh, cricket and that. And I think, yeah, we... We wanted to go there to play footy, uh, never gave out scholarships or anything like that. And I think that everyone just wanted to, yeah, I'll get chuck that in. Um, <laughs> yeah. that I'm not sure everyone was believing that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it always gets a laugh when I say that. We a- <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just great that uh, we... We, was, we were known in the area for that, for sport and for football. And, um, that yeah, it, it was it's always been uh, something that um, the, the school was um, – or back then the kids sort of thought the school held its hat on and um, we tried to just continue that when we were there. And unfortunately, we couldn't win any flags. But then, fortunately, they won, I think, three in a row a couple of years ago. So um, they won before and they won <laughs> after us when we were there, but we didn't win while we were there. So. And you also played basketball at school as well, which, um, you know, was a um, – it was only just basketball was only just starting as a school sport when I was playing, but it's become, you know, hugely popular. We had Ryan Brockoff on our earlier panel, of course, now playing for the Boomers. And how'd you go on the basketball court? 
Yeah, so uh, I made the ones in the end of year nine. So I had four seasons there, I think, um, 9 to 11, 12. And then, um, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. But, again, we lost two grand finals, so <laughs> still couldn't win one. Um, I think we lost Ivano when I was in year nine and then uh, Trinity in a grand final, which, again, played against Todd Goldstein from North Melbourne and Dave Mackay from um, uh, Adelaide. So we, uh, I was playing against footballers even in, even in the basketball terms, which was uh, quite unique there. And Todd used to dominate and dunk on every fast break. So um, <laughs> it was quite fun. Uh, but, yeah, I, basketball was my choice early on in my career I loved basketball over footy and uh, always wanted to play that but then when I realized I wasn't going to grow tall and six foot um, <laughs> that I probably should stick to footy and uh, in the end made the right call but yeah basketball was just as fun um, rocking up every Saturday morning at the Veneto Club and seeing all the teams play before you because we had by the time I got to I think 2006 and seven, every team played at the Veneto Club between eight and 12 uh, and on Saturday morning so you could rock up and see everyone play there and yeah, it was pretty cool Yep. What about uh, Dave, um, for, for John and Sam, did you play other sports as well? Yeah, I have a similar story to Dave there. We we made the uh, hockey grand final in the first against Campbell and we had um, we had a now Olympian, Josh Simmons and Kieran Anazan, two boys in the Australian team. Like we, we really couldn't lose. And um, yeah, they had some uh, questionable tactics on the day, taking out a couple of our star players, which was <laughs> always... To think about. And yeah, we ended up we ended up losing. And it's funny, Dave was mentioning the AGS thing there. I somehow made the AGS hockey team, and I had no idea. Really, I just had those two putting it on the top of the D, and I got to swing as hard as I could, which put a few in the goals. And I had no idea when we went to the AGS training, any of the drills, any of the runs, or anything the other coach was saying, because I was just so used to having um, those boys put it on the platter for me. But yeah, they were they were fun experiences. I wish I had the footy skills of um, Dave, but yeah, I was far too small for that. How about you, John? Did you play other sports? Uh, yeah, I did cross country growing up and uh, unfortunately it was too small growing up to play footy or anything like that as well. So stuck to running and something where I couldn't get hurt so I could actually play some tennis in the afternoon. <laughs> Mrs. Carroll, you're on my screen. Good morning, hello and welcome to you. We talked about the, the great traditions that you can build within a sporting school and I think of all of the AGS schools, you've done it better than anybody. And all of a sudden you arrived with a passion for netball, but um, started up the volleyball team and away it went at Yarra Valley. Away it went, yes, indeed. I'd played a bit at uni um, and I had a few friends. My daughter was playing and so I had a few friends who knew something about it. So went and had a few quick lessons on what to do and how to coach a volleyball team and it was great because it was a summer sport and so I it attracted all the footballers and the basketballers who loved to jump and hit and block um and so it was for them it was just this you know incredible sport that they suddenly got to learn and we we used to have a mini gym which was opposite the tuck shop and I sort of stuck a volleyball net up in there and the kids used to fly up to the, the gym just to get in and get on the court so they could have a hit at lunchtime. It just became, oh, I don't know, everyone just wanted to play volleyball. And uh, so away we went. And I think the first year we lost to Camberwell. They didn't have a final, but we lost to Camberwell in um, that one particular time we played them. So that meant that we didn't end up on top. But from then on, I think... I don't know how many years it was. Do you know, Rob? We just went through and I just... I think it ran to about 16 premierships, didn't it, <laughs> over the course of your time? Yeah, yeah. So it just... And I used to take the kids um, to nationals. We used to go up to Canberra, um, Alan Crawley, and I'd drive the mini buses and we'd take a couple of teams up to Canberra and stay in caravans next, next to the AIS and play against, you know, the best teams in Australia. And I think things like that you know, which gave the kids something to really aim for um, and just to be playing against the best in Australia um, just helped the whole program and it just blossomed. I talked about it in the in the first panel, the, the lunchtime uh, volleyball competition. Oh, did you? Uh, the steam dim sims at the, at the tuck shop were pretty good, I have to say, so I'd go and get a couple of those. But there, there, there was always an epic competition. I can remember we used to have our, you know, pick your own team and away you go and there'd be a mini championship and it was like a World Cup. It was <laughs> sensational. But girls' sport as well, Mary, because um, 
Yarra Valley is a, a young school in the AGS system, but also a um, co-educational school in the um, in year 11 and 12, firstly, and then broadening out about that. But you're a real champion for involving the girls in their in their sporting endeavours. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the boys seem to have it all. And I have to say, when I arrived, um, the girls in the athletics, Rob would get a laugh out of this, the girls in the athletics used to do the sack race and the egg and spoon race. And I said, you know, you've got to be kidding. We're not doing that. So, you know, so we just wanted it parity and equality and you know the girls could run and jump and throw as well as the boys given the opportunity and I guess um, I just championed their their spirit um, and I'm pretty passionate so um, it worked well uh, you know and, that, and the girls were great and we just used to um, then just go from there. And Rob you, you spent your life at, at AGS schools um, you know, growing up in Ringwood but um, going to Camberwell Grammar and playing footy and cricket and athletics and then um, teaching at, at Yarra Valley. Um, an amazing career involved in all of that. How do you remember the early days of actually competing in AGS sport in the in the athletics and the footy and cricket competitions? Well, my, as you say, I was at um, Camberwell Grammar from, I think, the mid-60s through to 70. I'd played a little bit of sport uh, at club level locally but going to uh, Campbell Grammar was um, just like being a kid in a lolly shop. There was just so much on offer. And I, I got, got got involved in a whole range of sports. I continued my athletics, obviously, and um, pursued cricket and football. But it was just the, uh, the huge range of sports and opportunities that were made available at Campbell that I really embraced and I got a lot out of it now. You know, in some ways, I was probably a, a jack of all trades and a master of few, which is probably synonymous with my uh, movement into decathlon later on in life, where I dabbled in a whole range of events. But I do and, remember um, in those days at Camberwell Grammar, sport was very important within the school. Um, we didn't have the full range of sports that, that, that are now available. Um, I think the traditional AGS premiership sports were probably tennis and cricket in summer, footy in winter, and uh, a swimming and an athletics carnival. There were lots of other sports played, and but they were sort of in combination with uh, a number of APS schools where they got together for fixtures. But there was really only five premiership sports there. So the competition was very fierce with, within the schools, um, and there were certainly some fairly good rivalries that were established between the various AGS schools in the pursuit of premierships. And in the athletics, you had a great record for Camberwell. Um, you still hold the uh, under-16 long jump record, I understand. 1968, there was a pesky guy from Yarra Valley that took one of your records by yeah. a centimetre. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, Great memories of the Athletics Carnival. You know, I, I, I was reading the the hundred year history book um, um, that Dennis put together, Mary, and it's a tremendous um, look back through the, through the years of all of the the battles that the schools had. But um, the Athletics for Yarra Valley seemed to be the holy grail, didn't it? And we, oh. we finally got there. What we did. Yeah. I mean, as a an interesting aside, you mentioned Athletics at Campbell. I, I was in the Athletics team at Campbell all the years I was there. And we had some top athletes and some great teams and we came very close at times, but we never won a premiership in my time. And I left Camberwell in 1970 and would you believe they won their premiership in 1971 <laughs> and then went on a run of something like nine out of the next 10 years. So clearly I was holding them back. <laughs> but I did get some satisfaction because... Um, in 1981, Yarra Valley won their first ever AGS premiership and um, to put the icing on the cake, it was in athletics. So I was a, I, I did get a chance to um, bring that Campbell run to an end with a, a victory at, at Yarra Valley. So I was part of a, a coaching panel that um, helped that happen. And I think it was particularly uh, significant in that year too because Alan Crawley, who is a, a renowned member of staff at uh, Yarra Valley, or was, and of course, heavily involvement in the AGS, 
his number one sport and passion was athletic. So again, for us to, for him to win that, first ever premiership in athletics was really something special for him and for the school. Um, John and Sam and um, David, Alan Crawley finished sixth in the long jump final in Mexico um, when Bob Beeman broke the world record. And of course I went to Yarra Valley and um, Alan helped me with my long jump as um, did Rob and the athletics team. And when Mike Powell broke that world record in Tokyo um, in 1991, I finished sixth and jumped 802. So the world record in the long jump has been broken twice in 50 something years. Um, there were two Australians in the final, both finished sixth, both jumped 802. One was Alan Crawley, my PE teacher, and one was David Colbert, the student at Yarra Valley. It's an amazing, uh, amazing coincidence. Just finally with Rob and, and Mary, that trio of, of you, Alan and, and Mary, were a dynamic force at Yarra Valley. What, what was the, you know, there seemed to be a good bond between you. You worked so well together. Um, drove all of those sporting things. It was amazing, really. I went to uni with Alan. Um, and so uh, Dennis then went to Yarra Valley in, I think, 1980. And the sports coordinator, oh, she wasn't that, she was just the, in charge of the girls' sport, um, was retiring. And Alan said to Dennis, what's Mary doing? And Mary was having a lovely time. I was written a netball book and I was just, you know, doing sort of, bit of coaching around um, Victoria with netball. And um, and so Alan said, you know, would you like to come to Yarra Valley? So I ended up there um, half time, I think. And for all the way through my children's primary school, um, I went from sort of a half to a third, two thirds, um, three quarters, four fifths, and finally full time. But um, right from the start, Rob, we had this tiny little office, but the three of us just got on so well, didn't we? Yeah, look, it was just the, the the perfect marriage, if you like. And we, we all had that vested interest in sport, but also the um, just a really keen affiliation with the AGS program. We were just all on the same page. And yeah. It just, just worked well. To Yarra Valley Fest here. Sorry, um, John and David. I'm going to come back to <laughs> – thanks, Mary and um, Rob. Uh, I'm going to come back to final thoughts from, from David, John and Sam about – message that you would have for those involved in AGS sport now from your memories and, and particular, I guess, for students, but also for, for the teachers um, and the sports coordinators and all of those, John, I'll start with you. Um, what have you taken from your um, school days that you still carry on today that the students of today can learn from? Um, I think this is the biggest thing is give it all a go and don't be afraid to go along and support the other teams as well. Cause I mean, I also recall some of the best memories even though I wasn't that great at the sports, was going along with the swimming and the athletics and watching the, the rest of the team uh, get up and about, you got the chance going, you're amongst it. I mean, just the way the carnival is, the atmosphere is fantastic. And I mean, to be able to get amongst that and to be able to get involved and just feel the adrenaline and the way the schools compete is something really special. And I think that's something that's you don't get to be a part of very often and any chance you get to be a part of that team and just that bond you share together in those moments is something really special and just definitely just give it a go and get amongst it really. Yeah. It's good advice. David. Um, yeah, I think, I think the same thing. It's um, I remember at Marcelin when you play footy, you'll have all the kids coming out on a Friday afternoon and you'll have a crowd of oh, 1200 to 1500 people watching you play footy and, um, it was pretty amazing, the atmosphere you could generate down there. And, um, yeah, that's that's kind of the team camaraderie that you have. That's what you always miss with your mates. Um, you always banter that week at school at lunchtime, who you're going to play that weekend. Um, and then you always talk up the rivalry with school. So, like you were saying, with Assumption and with Pegs. And, and that's kind of – you build up that through the week and then you play on the weekend. And I think just that, yeah, camaraderie, the rivalry is amazing. Um, but also just the relationships you create – with your mates, you don't just become students, you become best mates through footy, through sport. Um, with your teachers, your teachers become your coaches and then they become your, your, some of your, your great mates um, for the rest of your life. Um, one of my um, great mates who was at my 30th last year um, was my basketball coach, um, Ben Reynolds, who's um, partner of uh, Kath on the screen here. So uh, one of that, they become just, yeah, more than just, yeah, teachers and all coaches and that. So uh, for me, you get involved in sport at, uh, with school to, to get around your, your mates, but then they become more than that and, and you just build a bond through that. So that's what sport created for me. 
Yeah, it's excellent. And Sam? Yeah, I touched exactly on what Dave said then. It's, uh, we had the same thing. We just played down ball every lunchtime and just talked about who we were playing cricket that week or hockey or footy that week. And, um, yeah, it was pretty cool to then go out and play on a Saturday with those schoolmates. And I think you take it for granted that <laughs> all of a sudden you turn 18 or 19 and you actually won't be able to go and play with literally your best mates in a sporting environment. So, um, yeah, it was. it's probably up there with the most sort of fun and enjoyment I've had playing cricket. I mean, as soon as things left school, it became a little bit more serious and I wish I could still play with the enjoyment that I had and the freedom that you can play within the school environment with your mates. Yeah. I have to say, just listening to both you, Sam and David, it's no wonder that some of our teachers in the other subjects that were actually, that you know, we did go to school. I went to school to play sport. Yep. Sounds like we all did the same thing. Yep. Um, you know, no wonder our English and science and maths teachers sometimes weren't that fond of us, hey? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we had no time for that. <laughs> um, hey, thanks to you all. Um, to those watching this, I hope you've enjoyed the trip down memory lane. We've had two great panels um and this one i want to thank sam harper david zaharakis john pierce mary carroll and rob lethbridge thanks for your time no thank you david. No thanks